In this episode, we're going to have a nice talk about what I'm doing and the fact that I don't know. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about my plans moving forward. I think things have been a little bit misleading in that I've been talking about the Alkahest game a lot, but you guys have only seen me working on the engine. Uh, and so I've kind of hit this place where I think the plan is we're gonna make a spin-off series. Uh, this is gonna be the first episode of that. Uh, where I'm focusing just on the engine dev and then once the engine is at a point that I can actually start building something fun in it then we're going to resume the game dev log. That kind of goes hand in hand with this other thing I want to talk about which is that I am kind of using this project to learn C++ and I've been a, doing a really bad job of that. The code base up to this point is very inconsistent. There are pieces of code that I've pulled from other places that I kind of halfway understand but not fully and a lot of things especially in the early parts of the engine I just kind of threw together just to get it up and running and it's not really how I want the engine to be structured or how I want users to interact with the engine library. So the engine devlog series is going to be starting out with me doing a refactor of the code base so far. So I've got the new structure here. Instead of having a get repo for just the engine library, instead I'm, I've created a template repository that you can clone and you can instantly get started. There's not really a functional engine in there right now, but that should be changing soon. But it's got this sandbox file, and here in your sandbox file you can see that I actually have it set up so that there are essentially three functions that you need to define in the game code and then the engine is going to handle everything else. So you use the init function to set up anything that you need for your game. You use the update function that's like the running every frame, every engine cycle, updating your game objects. And then the cleanup function is just handling, cleaning up uh, any mess that you've made in memory up to whenever the game closes. This has also come along with me restructuring the include folder and how I'm creating the engine information. Uh, so I actually have a blank CPP file here that's because I haven't created anything that really needs a CPP file but I have also redone the application entry point as you guys saw including documentation which I'm very happy with. You can see there's just a base Alkahest game object I've also got the main function defined here. This is the application entry point where it's just creating the game and calling the run function. Creating the game handles calling both the system initializing function and the game initializing function and then it cleans up in reverse order. So this is where we are right now. Uh, I've got documentation set up with Doxygen and I'm planning on implementing assertions and logging. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so the first thing on this list is actually something that wasn't in the Alkahest engine before, which is assertions. Assertions basically just let me test that things are what I expect them to be, otherwise they stop the program from running and give me some debugging information. So I don't want to use the cassert library for this, or rather that header, because cassert is kind of hard-coded to only work on debug builds and I want to have two separate assertions. One that are on debug, which is the default that I'm building right now, and then another that always runs on release builds. That way we get a little bit of extra information when we're working with a release version of the engine. The assertions will also be available to people that are using the engine so that they can double check their logic and whatnot. Uh, when they're coding. So I'm going to go ahead and make those now. All 
Alrighty guys, so here is the basic assertion. I am also planning on setting up static assertions at some point. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna approach that, though there are a few things that I'd like to include, like the ability to add a message, kind of like the static assert from C assert, and I'm not entirely sure how I wanna go about doing that just yet. With that in mind, I'm going to leave it at this for now, and move on to the next step, which is logging. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and I will check back in with you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, so I have the uh, logging set up now. This is pretty much exactly how logging was set up in the old engine. What I do want to do is move the enum hasher and these values here into this anonymous namespace, which should keep them from being included or available when people are trying to do logging. Uh, and so all I really want to be available are these templated functions for format strings and also the base string functions here. Anyway, those are set up. And then if we check out our macros, uh, now we have our log error function that is set up inside of both our engine asserts and our regular asserts. And if I check out the main function here, this is intended to fail, uh, which is just an assert saying one equals two, which is not going to work properly. But if I do uh, script slash build, uh, so we'll run the build script there, and then if we run it, then we get the inUpdate function and also an assertion failed. And so how this is set up is it tells us it failed, it uh, logs it as an error, it shows the expression itself and the file name and the line where that error occurred. Uh, so that's going to be very helpful when I'm writing more complex systems in the engine to let me know exactly where things are happening and also the main point is for this to let me know when my assumptions that I'm making about uh, what the code is doing are true versus when I'm mistaken and I need to dig into what's going on. So anyway, that's assertions and logging done. So. Uh, that is going to be it for this episode. If you liked the video, then please do the thing. Um, if you liked the video, then please subscribe or comment or click the thumbs up button. And that helps me know that things are going okay. You know, that I'm doing doing good, good code. Anyway, uh... That's it. Next time we're going to be talking about uh, planning an entity component system. Hey guys, so Editor Anthony here. Uh, next week we are not going to be doing the entity component system. I actually have this awesome book that I am currently reading through to hopefully make me know what I'm doing. And I highly recommend this for anybody who also wants to create their own engine. There are a few things in the book that are like low level engine systems that I think are going to be really easy to set up now versus a real pain to set up later. So we're going to be creating a system for initializing all of the engine subsystems. We're going to be setting up memory management. We're going to be writing some actual unit tests. Uh, all of those are going to be packed into the next episode, so yeah, I will see you then.